Hey you guys and welcome back to Air Combat USA, Long Beach, California. My name is Mike Rocket Blackstone. We are continuing our discussion of flying fighters. This time we're going to talk about physiology. The thing that a lot of people think about when they uh, are thinking about flying fighters is, I'm not sure I can handle the G's. Everybody's a little worried about the G's and I'm going to try to demystify the G-forces with you a little bit here. Um, and to make it more understandable, less uh, of something to be nervous about, just something to be aware of. Uh, the first thing that you need to know when you are pulling G's is how they are created. So when you have an aircraft that's accelerating or has enough energy on it to actually apply back pressure and create centrifugal force, that's when the G's are gonna come on. So I like to think about it anytime the nose is down and the speed is high, you now have the ability to make G's. So before I give my students and our instructors give our students the pull command, right before I give you the pull back on the stick command, I'm gonna remind you to tighten up your stomach muscles before we pull so that you'll be able to take the G's a lot better. Now what's happening is, is from that high speed pullback scenario that we just described, Think of yourself as being in the bottom of a paint bucket and we swing that bucket and you can imagine the, the, the liquid at the bottom of the bucket is being held down into the bottom by centrifugal force. So if that is you in the bottom of uh, sitting in the bottom of your fighter in the seat of your P-51 or, or Marchetti or F-18, you are now going to feel those G's when you pull back on the stick. So if you tighten up your stomach muscles, tighten up your leg muscles, tense your neck muscles up before you pull back, you're gonna resist those G's a lot better. Now the sensation that you feel is, um, if you don't tighten up your stomach, is you're gonna start to see stars and spots. And this stars and spots situation is starting to develop from the blood being drained out of your head and your eyeballs are very susceptible to the loss of oxygenated blood. So as you start to see this, it's your, eye, it's your retina is actually starting to begin to shut down temporarily. And then the next thing that happens is your peripheral vision will start to close in and you'll find yourself squeezing into a tube and it will, it will continue to close out until you have no more uh, visual uh, cues. Your eyeballs are, have shut down. A few seconds later, if you continue to pull, that blood level will continue to drain and it will drain past your brainstem and you'll go unconscious. That's not good. If you're flying a single engine fighter or single seat fighter, you'd find yourself you know, down here pulling G's and at some point you start to see that tunnel vision coming in, you choose to ignore it and at some point you'll go unconscious and at that point you'd probably let go of the stick and now your airplane is accelerating full speed straight down. Not good. So. Um, you want to try to avoid that and, and be aware of those visual cues, flexing those stomach muscles, tightening your leg muscles up, old school style like if, like the P-51 Mustang pilots and like we fly in the Marchetti. Now the modern jets have G-suits and a lot of folks come in and they ask us, you know, why don't you guys wear G-suits? Why don't we use G-suits? Um, two reasons is, it's the G's that we're pulling are not high enough to require that. The G suit actually gives you one extra G capability. So if you're a 6G kind of guy, it will make it so you can be a 7G kind of guy. If you're an 8G kind of guy, then it'll push you into the 9G range so you can do the 9Gs like an F-16. However, um, it doesn't make it less fun, right? So um, no matter what, whenever you're pulling back on the stick, you'll hear the, the fighter pilots struggling to keep the oxygenation level high enough and their body flexed hard enough to keep the blood pressure high enough and push the blood back into our upper half. Uh, in the Navy, the, the pilots, you'll hear them on the, on the radio giving you this sound. It would be hook, 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 right? So they, they're holding the, the, the oxygen in their lungs, they're flexing their, their, their stomach muscles, and they're closing off their, their esophagus and keeping the blood up, and they, they audibly say the word hook. I don't use that method, but it is certainly a method to remind you to keep flexed while you're pulling the G's to help combat that, 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 that draining sensation that's happening. Um, so that will help you tolerate the G's a lot better. Just tighten up your stomach before you pull, demystifying it for you for sure. Uh, the G's are not that strong. Four G's is very tolerable. And really, in all reality, you really only need to pull about two and a half to three G's to get the job done. Four is optimal. Anything north of four, five, five and a half G's is just not really that necessary. 
um, you're bleeding the energy too quickly to really gain much value out of it. Now in an F-18, it's 7.4 Gs and they want to sustain the highest G, G uh, possible and the highest turn rate possible. It's a different world. They can sustain the Gs for a lot longer. It is a lot more punishing. Um, but for our purposes, you're going to get to feel the Gs. 4 and 5 Gs is no joke, but it certainly is, uh, is a lot more fun. All right, the other thing we talk about in physiology with flying fighters is a lot of folks are concerned about air sickness. Now, our goal, of course, is to keep you safe while you're out there. But the other thing is, is to keep you feeling good. I'm constantly checking at how my client is doing and, and our guest pilots are feeling. We're saying, hey, how are you feeling over there? I want to know how you're holding up, how you're tolerating this. So if you're doing well and you're having a good time, I could certainly tell by how big the smile is on your face. I'll look over and if I could see you smiling, I know you're having a great time. If I see the smile starting to diminish or it starts to go into the straight face or you're looking around, that's how I know we pushed you too far. So what we tend to do to make you feel better is to crack the canopy at low speeds. At high altitude, we can open the lid up on the canopy and get some of that cool fresh air in and that will always make you feel better. Um, stagnant warm air in the cockpit is just not really that pleasant. So we can open the lid up, get some fresh air, that will make you feel better. That's the first step. The next step is to look where the action is moving the least. Okay, so what I mean by that is, is let's say we're going to do some sort of a tail chase or some sort of a, of a rolling maneuver. We look straight ahead so that we can see the center of rotation and see the horizon pivoting around that point. So if you're rolling, looking straight ahead really helps your orientation, helps you feel better. If you're doing any kind of vertical maneuver, something like this, this is going to require you to look out the side window so you can see the horizon and see your wing uh, relative to that horizon so you can know where you are. So the key here is, is for your eyeballs, your ear, your equilibrium, your, your balance, and your stomach to always know where you are. And, uh, and you'll be feeling a lot better if you can keep those three things in agreement. And if one thing gets out of agreement, so you're going nose high like this, but you don't see it, you don't re realize it, uh, or you feel some zero gravity, but you don't realize you're at the top of a loop, for example, and these things start to disagree, that's what can really mess up your stomach. So uh, feel for that and look for those cues, and that's gonna always help you keep you feeling a lot better. Of course, if you do actually need to use the bag, I think another thing that prevents people from actually getting sick is to know that there is an air sickness bag in the airplane. We keep it up along the, uh, the windshield, along the, 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 uh, the glare shield between the glass and the, and the windshield. Um, so that you can find it and knowing where it's at is just half the battle. So if you know there's one available, you probably won't need to use it. I can safely say that over 90, 95% of our people do not get sick in the airplane. I try really hard not to make, let that happen. And if they do get queased out, it's because we pushed them too far. So that's my goal uh, with you. I hope you've gained a little uh, insight is to demystify the, the physiology of flying fighters. I know you can do this. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to take care of you with the G's. Make sure you don't uh, get queased out out there and you're going to be uh, just fine when you fly the fighter with air combat. My name is Mike Blackstone. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Click like if you liked it. Subscribe if you have not done so already. Leave us any questions or comments in the, the uh, comment section below and we will see you in the next video.